I advise you not to do it but then ultimately it's your choice it's your life it's your decision that company so do not try to play with the information that you share so you want to fake your experience letter or maybe your educational degrees let's be honest we have all seen some people who have faked their experience certificate or their educational qualification and they are still working in great companies or maybe small companies but everything is working seamlessly for them there is no problem at all so you are also tempted to take the same route and fake your experience certificate or your educational qualification but you are not really sure what will happen or you just need a little guidance on that so you have come on to the right video because i am going to share my perspective i have been a hr for almost a decade into it industry and i've seen it all happening for people so i'll share my perspective then you can decide whether you want to fake it or not fake it so with that let's get started So to begin with let's understand why people want to fake their experience or their educational qualification number one reason is that people find it difficult to start as a fresher as in uh, anywhere they go companies ask for some kind of experience and they feel if they do not start anywhere how will they have experience to show so they face that problem so they feel that if they get some kind of experience letter it will be a shortcut to the job for them or there is another reason as well some people fake their experience to cover up their gap i mean this is the craziest thing i'll say i've seen people doing because they don't need to but still people do we'll talk about that also so the next big question comes that what is the problem in faking your experience the biggest problem that we all know is that your background verification will fail and company will throw you out of the company it can happen at offer stage also it can happen once you join the company also and it can also happen after two years of your joining in the company yes that also happens and then people are kicked out of the companies for faking their experience in such cases guys say for example you were a fresher and you faked the experience letter of two years and then now it's been two years in uh, authentic company that you are working from last two years but now this company realized that uh, or found out that you have faked your experience letter which you showed and basis which you joined this company so now not all companies but some companies they will ask you to go obviously but they will not also issue you the experience letter because their argument is that you have gained that experience basis on a fake document so whatever fake document you had the experience you had you had now this experience will also not be counted in the worst scenario if you are not that lucky you can get in a situation where you will not get the two years of experience letter for your authentic experience as well companies don't give you when they fire you under these code of conducts they do not give you the experience letter and then you'll be stuck in a situation that you won't know what to do next now comes a very interesting explanation and i've seen a lot of people comment also about the situation that they have a friend who took experience letter from some training company or some company and it's all working out fine nobody found out about it now let's understand which kind of fake experience letter cannot be found out as a fake experience letter see the problem comes when you produce a document and uh, that you worked say for example in an ABC company now the background verification will reach out to that uh, ABC company to check whether you have worked there or not if that ABC company says that no this um, employee has never worked for us then that's a red flag that's a no now if that ABC company says somehow if you manage it somehow that they sent a communication saying that yes uh, whatever this employee is showing the experience letter the pay slips it's all authentic then obviously no company can figure out whether that's a lie i mean nobody can figure out because the company itself has authenticated it in such cases obviously company cannot figure out whether it was a fake or not now this happens when i've seen it happening with couple of training centers what they do is they charge really heavy fee 
from the students they give them proper training like a uh, legit training people are trained students are trained on particular technology and then uh, say for example the training was for six months or eight months then what they do is they issue an experience certificate along with the training certificate that they have worked there on that particular technology I have seen people taking jobs by showing these these uh, experience certificates now what's the problem here see if you're lucky the company might not even realize that it's a fake certificate but sometime it happens that there are a lot of people lot of candidates from the same training center who joins the same company then it becomes very evident and then the company starts digging deeper that what's happening why a lot of people from a single training center how it can happen that one company has so many freshers uh, who worked for the company for six months and then they all left. So in a natural scenario, this looks really odd. So the company will try to figure out and they will call an inquiry. In such cases, the company straight away blacklists the training center as in whoever comes from that training center the application they'll reject it straight away and obviously whoever has joined from that training center they will fire them all the employees who joined so this can happen i mean also you might not be aware that company has already blacklisted that training center that's why your resume is not getting entertained so in such a scenario even if your profile is good it will not be considered because you have the name of that training center on your resume and then you will think that i don't know why my profile is not getting shortlisted nobody no hr will give you that information on the email that this piece of information on your resume is the reason why we are not shortlisting you Nobody is going to tell you that. So, so sometimes it plays against you as well. And you can be totally unaware of it because you have seen your friend doing it and that friend got placed in some nice company and is working fine. But for you, uh, somehow it's not working out. So you are trying your best to put that experience on your resume. And the companies you are applying to, they might have blacklisted your experience company already but as i said you can find plenty of people who work just fine with that experience that fake experience but there are a lot of cases where people suffer also they get stuck so according to me it's not a good choice see sooner or later you will get a job if you are good at your skills as a fresher because everybody starts from that point zero nobody starts from point 10 even i started as a fresher in hr as a HR executive and there are several examples everybody starts at any profile they start at zero it's just that if it is not happening for you right now it might take a little more time but do not take the route of uh, faking the experience because then you will constantly have this sword hanging on your head that what will happen if they figure out what will happen if they figure out now you know my career is going well and i'm being promoted what if they figure out what if they figure out so that so that kind of negative self-talk will really impact your performance and you will not be able to deliver your 100 percent at the job so now as i told you initially that why people fake the experience one we discussed because they are freshers they want to start their career second thing people fake it to cover up their gap they think that that gap that they have taken is the only reason they their profile is not getting shortlisted or they are not getting job so they should cover that gap with some fake experience guys number one thing as a hr i'm telling you that your gap is not the reason of your rejection it is your incapability to match to the expectations of the interviewer that you get rejected. Try to remember at what level you were when you stopped working and see where are you after that gap of two years. Do you think you are exactly at the same level? I mean, you remember everything and you are that sharp and you are well connected with the technologies and you know everything on top of your head. Do you really think you are at the same level? If you are not at that same level, that is the reason why you are not getting job. If you have four years of experience, you took two years of gap. If you still are at the level of that four year experience person, anybody will hire you who needs a 
employee with four years of experience they will hire you for sure because they also need people who can join like immediately the sole reason is that you are not yet at that level so rather than covering your gap with some fake experience what you really have to do is you have to make sure then that when you start again after a gap you start at the same level where you left people who do not have gap and are working and who are trying to switch they also get rejected they do not have gaps so they do not blame it on the gap so stop blaming it and stop covering it you do not need by adding that fake experience letter you are adding on to the difficulties in your career you have to later bear the consequences of all this fakeness so do not do that because you do not need to fake the experience or anything for that gap to cover up that gap so do not do it so let me tell you how companies verify the employment or the experience number one way is obviously they reach out to the company where you said you were working so some people have this assumption that they reach out only to the uh, references which you provide say for example if you have given the name of your manager they'll reach out to that some people have that assumption though they will do that but uh, you know person can say their colleague as their manager so that never works out do not do that do not give your friends number or email address as saying as this is this was your manager never do that because i've seen this happening a lot where we i received the background verification mail as a hr and in that the manager of the person who was written as a manager he was the colleague as in at the same level with that person if i wanted i could have rejected that background verification saying that this employee is lying so do not do that do not ever do that because companies reach out to the other companies in several ways and especially to the hr team they have the contacts somehow because that's the work of the background verification agencies they have the contacts so they will for sure send the email to the hr of that company so do not try to play with the information that you share whatever whoever was your manager give that information because background verifications will not reach out to your managers as such most probably they are going to reach out to the hr team though they can reach out if they want but 99 percent of the time companies do not reach out to the individual managers they reach out to the hrs to verify all the information and second way they also try to verify your employment from your un record like your pf accounts not the statement as such but where your pf account was linked to which company where you if it is linked to a certain company then obviously you have worked for that company no company can give you a fake pf account creation so that cannot be faked so they try to check that also if there is no pf account found or there's no entry as such then they try to get some more information from the employee because uh, sometime if the company is small they do not have their pf registered so that can also be the case so these are the typical ways through which a company is try to figure out or authenticate your employment your experience and there can be many other ways also but these are the generic ways where mostly 99 percent of the times companies follow this structure so you have all the information with you so so now it's up to you what decision you take and i always encourage all my viewers to not get indulged into such situations because then the consequences are very bad you never know if you are that lucky person who just never gets caught or you are that unlucky person who gets caught so you'll make the situation difficult for yourself so i advise you not to do it but then ultimately it's your choice it's your life it's your decision my job is to make you aware about the facts and how things happen in corporate so that you can take the most wise decision so guys with that we came to the end of this video and i really hope that this piece of information helps you somewhere in your career and if you still have any query you can leave that in the comment section i'll try to answer all those queries to the best of my abilities with that i'm signing off you stay tuned keep on watching more content on the corporate diaries to be corporate ready and i'll see you in my next video till then stay safe and healthy take care bye